Hello, everyone in the audience out there, people here, hello. We are here to talk about AI and ML, as you can see, but you know, it is boring but critical, right, to all of your ops. I'm deaf, we are both deaf, um, we use sign language. We've got two interpreters here in the front row. The voice is coming from them, not up here. So just so you know, make sure you, everybody can hear okay. By the way, I'm Rob Koch. I am from Seattle, Washington, and I work for Slalom as a principal with the data and platform engineering teams. Great to be here. Hi. My name is Milad Vafafard. I'm a lead software engineer for EPAM, and I'm based in Hungary. And I flew all the way in here for about 20 hours to get wow. here. <laughs> so I'm recovered. I'm here. I'm happy to be here. And I'm thrilled to see all of you people here giving me energy. And it's like the medicine of the spirit. We're here getting energy from you. We're very excited to have this talk. Oh, and by the way, we are competitors. So not today. <laughs> we're part of a community today. So we're here together today. Why the focus on ops? Well, AI and machine learning are very glamorous applications, but behind the scenes, they need strong infrastructure. There are some critical aspects that we must consider, including compute resources, separation of data, reliability, and observability. Service meshes simplify these challenges, allowing engineers to focus on AI and ML innovations. AI and ML, ML are hot topics, but for models and training and data sets, they need to work effectively. Thus, they require reliable operational infrastructure. We'll explore how service manage, message, meshes can offload much of this burden and allow us to focus on the exciting AI and ML part. Kubernetes uh, is, comes into play because the M AI and ML workloads require significant com computational resources and special hardware. Kubernetes is all about managing and orchestrating tasks, right? So it's a natural fit for managing AI training, etc. Kubernetes can orchestrate these tasks, but needs to handle the challenge of processing huge data sets while ensuring isolation between users and models. These are monster jobs. We're talking about massive compute requirements, massive data sets, and massive images. We would need to use specialized hardware like GPUs. Now, of course, they're hard to come by, and they're pricey. And these days, usually available through your favorite hypercloud providers. Hypercloud and major vendors are hogging all the chips from the market. But they can't help it because it's the demand, right? Some steps to take. Install GPU drivers or nodes. Ensure kubelets and recognize GPUs. Request GPUs in your pod spec. And use distributed training framework such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Kubeflow. Isolation is critical. Also, these models are compute hungry. If you have more than one GPU, they can fight with each other. At that point, you have to act like a referee and make them play fair, right? Keep them apart. Absolutely. <laughs> you might also need to keep different users' data separate. 
Data volume makes locality important because you really don't want to move things around on nodes when you don't need to. You may need to have a way to run the same queries against multiple models, sometimes checkpointing. Rob? So how does Kubernetes make this easy for all of us? Kubernetes is a great horizontal and vertical scaling, which has models that can support that. When you're training those models, you often need to scale up momentarily to be able to use all those resources, as you know, it will, your cluster is always moving. You want to keep the balance of the workload so that you can keep those ML ops going, distribute the training across that. Really, therefore, you're providing Kubernetes uh, operators and custom resources there. Imagine running a model and then all of a sudden it crashes. It means you have to start all over again, right? We don't want that. So what we do is we have various checkpointing involved so that we can define persistent storage that will allow you to save and resume your training, which ensures durability at those various checkpoints when you're building your training models. Autoscaler can be very useful here as well, using HPA, VPA, et cetera. We can allow Kubernetes to intelligently manage and scale operations so that you can go to sleep at night knowing that your cluster can handle the unexpected perfectly, right? Okay, to a point. I've already done that. I've gone to sleep and been paranoid that something was going to happen, and sure enough, it did in the middle of the night. So I've been there. Continue, Rob. Please yeah. continue. Don't deploy on Fridays, right? Right. That's the famous last words, right, on Friday. And then you're very sad on Monday. OK, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so another specialized hardware that's required for GPUs um, can be provisioned anywhere thanks to the cloud. Kubernetes can also do the discovery and the allocation for you. Let's say the hardware has certain requirements for a specific time of day or a specific operation. You might need some heavier hardware to handle that or maybe some minimal hardware, depending on what you're doing. Kubernetes can handle all of that. The architecture in Kubernetes allows you to just plug in the hardware as a cluster and go forth and build something magical. <laughs> just like magic. We also have things like RBAC, role-based access control. We also have things like you know, driving network capabilities with that that are robust, uh, CP GPU support, robust networking connectivity, et cetera. And that, I mean, there's nothing that Kubernetes can't handle, right? Because really, the open source nature of all of it and the great community and support that we have to ensure the viability of the platform can continue on with specialized add-ons that make Kubernetes work for you, right? So, I mean, have you seen the CNCF landscape map? It's massive, and there's Huge. so many icons. Makes your you eyes go crazy really, trying to <laughs> process it all. I mean, how do you decide, right? Maybe security you're looking through. Okay, maybe I'll pick Falco for that. Um, for cluster management, maybe Leakerd. Uh, for the... You know, ML folks out there, maybe Kubeflow or Argo for deployment. So many options. Rob was just explaining about Kubernetes itself and how it has a lot of strengths. But it also has a few weaknesses there, too. And there are two areas in which the weaknesses present themselves, specifically security and hardware management. We'll discuss more in depth about how uh, these gaps can be filled by other tools, specifically service mesh, of course. All the usual things about zero trust apply. Zero trust architecture. There are threats inside and outside the network. Someone is always out to get you. Every single request ideally should have authentication and encryption in transit. Mm -hmm. 
And Kubernetes doesn't magically provide workload authentication, nor does it magically provide secure communications. It's designed to get up and running without too much ceremony, and then we can harden it with a service mesh. Dedicated hardware is also kind of recent in Kubernetes, so it can be awkward to deal with. A little hard to manage at times. Kubernetes was designed to be scalable on commodity hardware, which I'm not gonna really go into now. You all know all that already. The hardware it's running on is relatively identical. Say if you have two nodes, usually of the, they are of the same make and config. Schedulers are optimized for general purpose workloads and new GPUs, TPUs, and DPUs support has been added fairly recently. If it's new and not commoditized yet, it'll remain fairly complex. You already know how to configure HPA, horizontal pod autoscaler, on a specialized GPU, right? I don't know, Rob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Well, guess what? Yes, of course, of course. Any traditional service mesh can provide zero trust. It has to. The new flavors out there, you know, like Istio Ambient and eBPF-based service meshes, they may not, uh, but you know, at minimum, they're much more complex to operate. But since Kubernetes and AI are complex enough, we can recommend things like Linkerd, which is much, makes it much simpler to operate. Also, there's much more secure, thanks to its proxy, which is written in Rust, so less memory leakage there. C++ and other service meshes that rely on C++. Uh, remember back in the day, there was a lot of memory safety bugs and things like that, which we wanted to reduce that, those bugs there. So using uh, Linkerd can help with that. Then look at this little cute icon here. Do you see the cute little happy lobster on the slide? The sign for lobster is, um, you see his hands? His claws, it looks, that's the sign for lobster. I'm signing it right now. Now the letter L is the first letter for Linkerd. So we have created um, a sign for Linkerd. We use your L handshapes, everybody do it with me. And we combined it with the lobster and we sign Linkerd. And I would really love it if I could take a video or a picture of the audience, everybody signing Linkerd at the same time. Could you do that for me? That's great. <laughs> All right, Rob. <laughs> so any reason, any uh, real reason, reasonable mesh can handle uh, what you're providing to it, like a silver platter, right? You should be able to secure, keep security in mind, and as far to the left as possible, uh, you should be able to never assume trust, and every interaction is secured and verified. This reduces the risk of attack surface and limits the potential impact for breaches. So what I like to say is verify everywhere, every time. That's Linkerd. So with observability, uh, being able to see what's going on, really, that's key. You all have challenges with observability, I'm sure. 
always getting things, you know, your boss is getting on you about the observability and they want to be able to see it, right? So Linkerd does automatically collect metrics such as volume, success rate, latencies, and error rates. All of that data is ready and available for you. These metrics are critical to head off potential issues and establish the baseline performance measurements to capture the possible anomalies that might be out there and also identify and capture any unusual behavior because with that zero error rate, hopefully, <laughs> you can brag to your boss now and say, oh man, look what I'm doing. This is so great. I'm running your platform so seamlessly. So Linkerd can provide Prometheus and Grafana integration right out of the box, same as other Kubernetes services, services and plugins, right? And you can trace the traffic that it passes through the different services as well. So you can get, in short, the MTLS metrics, topology, proxy integrations, if you have to, and live traffic, and much more. Your mesh, you can also provide rock solid multi-cluster support. And currently, major service meshes all offer this. But the question is the complexity. Linkerd focuses on performance and operational simplicity. Some of the others uh, trade complexity to support other features, but really, with critical functionality and operational simplicity is really the best way to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good job. You're working out. I can tell you're exercising. Okay. Building up the muscle. <laughs> Clusters let us completely isolate sensitive things, and they also let us more easily manage dedicated software. Hardware, rather. We can pile all those monster CPU and GPUs into a cluster and then just know that we have the hardware we need there. If we need to, we can isolate really sensitive data sets into their own clusters. Admittedly, this can make it a little tricky because trying to get the most out of your utilization with all those GPUs is not easy. We admit that openly. And this is where people start screaming about latency. But workloads that are severely compute bound are basically never latency bound. You can see that there's operational partitioning, and you can split testing and dev into smaller, cheaper clusters, and then route queries to the clusters for real-world usage. You can run query controllers in one cluster just for switching. and then let them route to whatever other clusters have particular resources or models. Let workloads follow the moon to use idle cycles or always use clusters in particular regions to comply with GDPR or equivalents. It's kind of lazy, follow the moon, you know. <laughs> All of this is particularly important because this is utter reliant on stable, Easy to operate, easy to operate mesh, of course. And of course, Europe, US, all over the world follows different standards on this. And as I said, it's utter reliant on stable, easy to operate mesh, of course. We were going to show you a demo, but we decided we didn't have enough time for that. 
Um, so we only have a few minutes left, I think 15 or so, so um, we didn't really want to rush through that. So we would encourage you to check out Buoyant Service Mesh Academy. And that will discuss how to use Linkerd multi-cluster multi to tackle to some common use cases. Linkerd can streamline the deployment and management of AI and ML applications. With increasing number of systems adopting multi-tenancy, you have constraints between cost, scalability, and performance. You can't really have them all. You know that triangle where you have to pick two? You have to decide if cost, scalability, or performance, oh, two of those are your favorite things. So as a result, you might prefer to work with different clusters that are different compute flavors, thanks to GPUs and other heavy, compute heavy workloads. And the key point is what, Rob? Come on, tell us. You know, back up a little bit, actually. What do you prefer, cost, scalability, or resources, right? Which would you prefer? I, I can't pick because it depends on what the system requires. You have to prioritize which ones are important for the situation. How do you decide? Oh, I think that's a hard decision uh, because you would need a lot more information. So you've got cost, how much you spend on, let's say, your operations. What's the other one, right? Let's say scalability. So let's say one day, all day, you're scaling up and down. But then you want to save more costs. But that will hurt performance, right? Yes. So it gives it time to scale up and scale down scale up and scale down, um, depending on preference. Most of us like cost efficiency, especially our bosses, right? No. <laughs> so cost is not my favorite one. You know, I mean, nobody has money for all this stuff, right? You a credit right? card, right? Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> right in my pocket. <laughs> but really, the key point is, joking aside, is that everything should be provided um, secure, reliable, and scalable for your ML operations through a service mesh. By leveraging these technologies, we can really simplify the operational burden and focus more on innovation. I mean, AI with ASL innovation, we could come up with, you know, using LLMs, we can come up with all kinds of different approaches and ways to do our work. So really, innovation is nuts right now. Well, American Sign Language, video, oh man, that's so image heavy. That takes right. so much of the resources out there. So you have to have a GPU running behind the scenes. It's a lot of GPUs, you're right. So I wanted to reinforce, too, that the this is only effective as the infrastructure supporting it. So the service meshes are a really powerful way to ensure that AI and ML workloads are really reliable, secure, and scalable. Maybe you, you know, have multiple containers and clusters. Maybe you have one specific GPU for training the model. Maybe you're using TensorFlow for that, and you've got a GPU there. You might have another one for NVIDIA, for example. Uh, another cluster could be for your commodit commoditization of your hardware. So you know there, the API needs that are required there. So Linkerd can really connect all of these things together and across different regions. So it's really simple to use, and it adds uh, you can add YAML files into one of your deployments uh, configurations, and just you know that chunk up chunk of the YAML right there. It's super easy, and it's important to remember that the service meshes um, can work with a lot of different clusters, and making sure you authenticate for security. That's one of the big communication things when you're talking about things in transit, making them all work together in a secure fashion. That's not a threat to internal or external security. Linkerd helps with that. Yep, it verifies everything everywhere, like I said before. All right, in closing, recommended reading. Here's a list of resources that you can go in and look at more at your leisure. 
um, and understand that the underlying infrastructure is crucial to building resilient and scalable AI and ML applications and whatever trendy thing that's coming our way next. Yeah, you know, there's always some trendy thing coming our way next, right? <laughs> We're on our way, right? Wink, wink. You got it? Hmm? I don't know. <laughs> and our working group. Yay, Do you want to talk more about group. our working group? So we've got the deaf and hard of hearing working group here that makes the conference more accessible and inclusive for all of its attendees. We partner with the community to provide access for different services, uh, teaching best practices for conferences in the future. So we'll, we'll have, uh, Kubernetes has a glossary. Uh, some of the members here who were actively working on that are sitting up here. Um, Amazing. So there's a lot of different um, languages there. There's English, Turkish, uh, Spanish, and we added ASL to the glossary. Maybe we can add some Hungarian sign language as well. So he's from Hungary and I'm American, and we sign very, very different natively. Uh, but here, thank you for learning ASL, Milad, to make it easier for me to understand you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a deaf and hard of hearing working group here in the front row, many of the members here. Thank you for coming and showing your support. And also, I would add something that's very important. We have a kiosk down in the um, pavilion and stop by and say hello. We would love to meet you in person and talk with you. Uh, please come visit us at our kiosk down at Icy Caves, and um, we'll have more experiences that we can share with you at that time one-on-one, -on -one. and um, I can't wait to see you at the kiosk. Our team on stage, here's our talks that um, from the CNCF working group, um, the deaf and hard of hearing working group, these are the talks we're having this week. And um, you can definitely take a picture of that. We've got a QR code right there that you can utilize and um, help yourself to that and then share it. And if you wanna talk about Platform engineering, data engineering, feel free to reach out. Uh, this is my LinkedIn, uh, the top one listed there, and then Malad's, uh, you know, what do you specialize in? Software engineering, React, front end? A lot of things. Uh, front end, back end, data, cloud, and um, if we're talking about the cloud, um, it's already set up there. I don't have to do a lot of configuration. So I'm still learning quite a bit of things about um, being compatible with um, the cloud. And you use Linkerd, right? Yeah. You have to. Well, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my boss said I had to please go to my boss and say, can we please use Linkerd? So um, we were talking about this a little bit. But um, please let us know how, um, how we did. Give us some feedback. We'd be happy to receive that from you. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Yay, Rob. <laughs> Thank you all.